So with us covering transactions so frequently, you must be wondering for yourself, wow, uh, I'm going to have to do transactions all over the place. After all, the, this example with the optimistic locks where I have to get something and then unlock it and two people could do it at the same time, there's going to be transactions all over the place. And you know, if I want to be really safe with pessimistic locks, how, how is that going to work? Well, I want to talk uh, about that real briefly, and that is when um, to explicitly add transactions to your application code. Uh, because the if you're not coming from a Rails model, you might think, uh, or a framework I should say, you might think this is going to have to be all the time. But here's something cool, Rails knows that this is important and so Rails will automatically insert transactions around all all saves and I'll put that there and update uh, method calls. And you might be asking, well, well how's that going to help me? That's only going to save one thing. And the uh, answer is we're going to utilize callbacks. So you can register a callback on a model and we're not going to go into detail on how and where to do that but what you can do is you can say when this model is being saved go ahead and update its children uh, and that's going to be part of the save call and so as a result it's going to be wrapped in a transaction if you update a book order you can decrement the inventory if you add an item to a cart you can update the total uh, on that order and so forth and that can all be part of these callbacks and this is just a sampling of callbacks there are more callbacks that are uh, available and so it's it makes it really easy and straightforward to be able to make sure that you have transactions right by just making sure that if you have related information that needs to be updated or saved or modified in the same way that if you do it uh, before your save, your creation, your update and, and so forth that those will be encapsulated in a transaction automatically for you and you don't have to do anything more about the transaction piece uh, that will just get be done for you and so then you just make sure that you do your optimistic or pessimistic locking and you're good to go and then there's always ways where you can check to to see if your transactions failed or or succeeded or do something if they succeed or failed so there are transactions specifically for uh, there are callbacks specifically for your transaction succeeding with a commit or failing with a rollback. And so th these are very nice features to make sure you have everything you need to get a transaction to work correctly.